Mastering Keepa may be the single most important tool to a successful Amazon business. What's up everyone, I'm Alex with AC Flips on YouTube. I'm a six figure full-time Amazon seller and today I'm gonna give you a complete tutorial on what Keepa is, how to use the tools inside of them, and how to understand if a product is worth purchasing based on the Keepa data. If you're currently using Keepa, you kinda understand how important the tool is to know whether a product is worth purchasing or not. If you've never used Keepa before, Hopefully this video convinces you to start because without Keepa, you really don't understand if a product's going to be profitable at all. Of course you have the Amazon Seller app and Seller Amp to understand if the product's profitable at that price, but you really don't know if it's going to be profitable by the time you have the product listed, or even if you wanna purchase this to list in the future. So let's jump on the computer and go through all the details of Keepa. And the first thing you wanna do if you've never used Keepa before is download Keepa get the Chrome extension so you can add it to each product page you're looking at. If you wanted to, you can copy and paste the ASIN into Keepa.com, but that is just going to take a lot longer. This method is much quicker. So once you have the Chrome extension up on the Amazon product page, you have all of this data in front of you. There's so much data that Keeper provides, but for newbies, it might be a little confusing and overwhelming. So let's break down each thing and how you can use it. So the first thing you want to look at is this pink buy box line. The line is going to tell you what price the buy box was at the time of sale for that certain seller. So as you can see, this product sold anywhere from the low 30s up to the mid 50s. Also on this chart is the sales rank, and that kind of tells you how quickly this product is selling at its current price, and that paints a nice picture over time. This new price, you don't have to have that on, but it just shows you what the lowest price is. Usually FBM sellers sell near this low price, otherwise there might be just someone who's repriced or screwed up, or they just list it really low, trying to get rid of it for some reason. So for me, I like to look at that pink buy box line. That gives me the biggest indicator of what price products are selling at. This middle chart is just another indicator of the sales rank and the breakdown of sales ranks. I don't look at that too much because all I need to see is the top level sales rank. And then the bottom chart shows you the number of sellers on the listing at any given time, as well as the review count. And this is all great information. If we look at this sidebar on the right, obviously you can toggle things on and off. If you wanna look at FBM sellers, if you wanna look at FBA sellers, you can see what price some of them are listed at, but obviously things are going to sell at the buy box price. One tool that's pretty helpful is looking at different time ranges. So during the Christmas season from about mid-November through December, you're going to have inflated prices and sales rank might be all over the place. So what you wanna do is potentially look beyond the three months ago. This price was pretty consistent around that 30 to $40 range until we got closer to Christmas. So maybe stock counts got a little bit lower and the price was inflated due to you know people paying whatever they want to get it on time for Christmas. But after the Christmas rush and inflated prices goes away, we can see that this price is pretty consistently around that 30 to $40 range. And that's some data we wanna make sure we know before making a purchase. If we're able to only find this product profitable when it's at a $50 sale cost and looking at past data, we can understand that this price is probably gonna end up back towards the 30 to $40 range in the next month or two. We might not wanna make that purchase if we can't get it profitable when we're selling it at the $40 range. Another super important indicator is to relate the seller count to the buy box price. Oftentimes you're gonna see an increase in seller count equals a decrease in the price. And we can see that here, we went from five sellers up to 15 or 16 sellers, and the price went from $40 all the way down to $32. That's just what happens, it's a supply and demand thing. But we gotta understand when these things happen and how the price reacts, and also can we find this profitable if this price action goes down. Typically, I like to look at the three month range, but like I said, with the inflated Christmas prices, we might wanna look a little bit farther back to get a better picture of what this product's going to sell like in the next three months. At the bottom here, you can see the sales rank over time, something definitely good to look at, but in the sports and outdoor category, we're looking at, you know, in the last 90 days, an 11,000 rank, that's really good. Next thing we wanna look at is the data tab. This product details page is the first tab that shows up. This page basically gives you the details on the product, you know, the sales rank over time, just in numbers. So if this chart doesn't make a ton of sense to you, this kind of puts it in numbers for you. Not a page that I look at a ton, but it is good to see if the trend of the buy box you know, stays consistent over time or if the sales rank is dropping over time, all things you wanna consider when making a purchase. The tab that I like to look at the most is the offers tab. The offers tab is going to help you understand how many sellers are on the listing, how many people 
what price they are listing at and selling at, you know, how much they've had in stock in the past, how many have sold in the last 30 days. Don't take these numbers as gospel. They are not completely accurate. Keep it doesn't know exactly what is selling. Only Amazon really knows those numbers, but it still gives you a good indicator. Sometimes they are able to guess uh, based on your stock counts, how many products they have sold in the last you know, 30 days. And then you can understand if these people that are selling this product are selling FBA or if an FBM seller is still getting sales. And another key indicator that I think a lot of people skip over is when they were first seen. If someone was seen months and months ago and they still have items in stock, that either means that this listing doesn't sell well, which we know by the sales rank that it does sell well, or it means that they've been on the listing a long time and they've been able to find it profitable for a long time. We can assume that this seller has been on the listing for nine months now and still has items in stock at this price, which means maybe they're finding it profitable and they are still able to list and sell at this $41 range. If this product sells out a lot, which maybe means that certain sites go on sale, but they sell out pretty often, you can look at historical offers and then that'll show you a lot more sellers that used to sell this product, but maybe went out of stock to give you a better idea of what price was selling the most at, how many sold in the last 30 days of people that went out of stock, and then just other, other indicators of how long people have been on the listing and whether or not they're selling FBM or FBA. The next tab that's very important is the buy box statistic. There are gonna be certain listings where one or two people are hogging the entire buy box and their percentage might be close to 70 to 90%. Those listings you might want to avoid because one, they're either a wholesale listing or two, someone has been getting the buy box very consistently and Amazon likes to give it to them because maybe they have a lot of good ratings, maybe they have always a lot in stock and other factors that will give them the buy box more often. You don't really wanna to try to compete with someone like that because a lot of times you won't be able to get the buy box at all, if not only a few times because that person obviously has the right algorithm to get the buy box more often. A listing like this, where there's a pretty good distribution of sellers getting the buy box, especially at these prices, is going to tell you that there's a chance that you are able to get the buy box as well. A lot of these sellers are FBA sellers, which means that you might have better luck getting the buy box if you sell this product FBA. And there is an FBM seller that was able to get the buy box 2% of the time in the last 30 days. And maybe that has to do with people going out of stock during Christmas time. So we can go back as far as 180 days to 365 days to see if FBM sellers are still getting the buy box often. We can see that when you go back to 180 days, which is the last six months, one seller got up to 35% of the buy box share. It looks like their price is pretty low, so maybe that's why Amazon was giving them the share often. But we can still see that other people are getting the buy box share at a little bit higher prices, which is good to see that we don't have to list it at $36 to get any chance at a buy box share. My gold standard is looking at the 90 day range in most of these categories because that gives me a good enough picture of what this product has sold in the past and what I can expect to sell it in the next couple weeks to a couple months. If this product has variations, whether it's a different shoe size or it's a different size of clothing, you wanna make sure to check the variations because not all variations sell the same. So what you wanna do is sort by the amount of ratings a product has. The reason we sort by the ratings is because if you think about this, a product that has ratings means that it has sold enough times to get that amount of ratings, right? So if a product has no ratings, you go down to some of these odder colors that don't have any reviews on them. That means that no one really has bought the product enough to want to review it, right? Let's say one in every five purchases of a product get a review from a customer. We can assume that you know this has sold anywhere from you know three to 500 times to get those 87 reviews. The more reviews, Theoretically, the more times this product has sold. So we can use that as a rough estimate indicator to see how many times a certain product has sold. For men's clothing, it's the large, the mediums, the XLs that sell the best, and also the neutral colors, right? The blacks, the whites, the grays, those products are most likely gonna sell the most in a set of variation. So once we sort by the ratings, we can see the three black shirts, large, medium, XL are the ones that sell the most based on the ratings. And then we can also see what the buy box is of each of those products. If we can assume the medium still sells well compared to the XL and the large, it has the highest buy box, maybe that's the product we wanna look at first. But these are the main indicators that I look at in the variations tab. I'm looking at the ratings, sorting by them obviously. I'm looking at the buy box price, and I'm also scrolling and looking at the different color variations that still are getting some buy box share to understand if it's worth expanding my reach to different products inside this variation. 
So now that we've broken down all of what Keepa has to offer, how do we use some of these tools to understand if it's worth purchasing the product or not? So we're looking at the medium because that had the highest current buy box price. So I wanna look at what is the price action doing and how does that correlate to the new offer count? We know the sales rank stays pretty steady and under 20,000 in the sports and outdoor category is going to sell enough times to pick one of these variations to try to sell. So we're gonna look for spikes in the offer count and we're gonna look for drop-offs in the offer count and see what the price action does. We can see back in October that we only had two or three sellers on the listing and then within the next couple of weeks, we were up to 18 we see that the price goes from $44 all the way down to $30. As we see the seller count drop a little bit, which there's a lot of different reasons why the seller count drops. Maybe this product is selling better in a certain time of year. If this is a long sleeve, maybe it sells better as the days get colder. Or people were buying this product at a sale, which is why you know the offer count shot up so much. Everyone was getting this discounted and it was profitable at $44, but people fight for the buy box price. They drop their prices to try to get that buy box and then it drops the price. All the way down to $30. People are selling well at $30, but maybe not as profitable. And then the next logic is the sale went away, so people aren't able to find it profitable anymore, which means they aren't replenishing, which is the offer count goes down. And then those people that are still on the listing are able to mark their prices back up a little bit because we can see in this five to 10 offer count range, we might be able to list it around $40. And we can see again, goes from seven to 10 to 12 in that range. And we're able to get the buy box for around $40. Because of Christmas, I'm sure a lot of these were selling out. So the offer count drops all the way down to almost one. And the seller was able to get the buy box at $50. The sales rank does go up because the price is higher so maybe people are less likely to buy at this higher price. They'd prefer to buy down here in the 30 to $35 range, but that's the reason maybe why the sales rank is creeping up over time here. So what would intrigue me to buy this product? We wanna understand, can we be profitable all the way at the lowest price that we might see? If this product goes on sale again at any website, or if it's just profitable at its current price, what are the chances that other people are going to find this product? And what are the chances that I will still be profitable if the seller count goes up and the price levels out at a little bit lower price? So what I would wanna do is understand at what cost would I still be profitable selling this product around $30? Obviously the offer count isn't gonna stay at one forever, even when it gets you know down to two or three to four in the past, it's going to creep up over time because people are gonna be able to find this product if a sale happens on a website, you're not the only one that's gonna find the sale here. So we gotta expect that the price will go down eventually over time as more people jump back on the listing. And can I find this profitable when the price is that much lower? The historic data looks good. We can see the, st the sales rank stays fairly steady over time. Even with increased seller counts way in the past, we can see that the price really doesn't go below that $30. So that's kind of my bottom line price. If I can find it profitable for thir selling at $30, I'm okay purchasing this product to see if I can buy in the future. If I wanted to test buy this product, I'd buy around 10 to 18 products, send it FBA, see if I get sales pretty quickly and get the buy box share. If so, I will be replenishing that product and continuing to look at other variations in this listing to see if it's worth buying more of this product, depending on how fast that first test buy sells. All in all, I hope this analysis helps you understand which products you should be purchasing and using the Keepa data and the charts to understand your future purchases. Like I said, hopefully this video convinced you that Keepa is worth using in your Amazon business. If I had to pick one tool to use to be successful in my Amazon business, it would probably be Keepa, just because of the versatility of how much data there is and how much information can help you make a good purchase decision to sell products for your Amazon store. If you guys found this video helpful, definitely subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.